Good morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're grateful and thankful to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank God that he has allowed uh, me to be here one more time and allowed us to come this morning and do this uh, YouTube uh, video. Our church doors are closed. Our services are counseled. But thank the Lord that we are able to use the tools that the Lord has given us to worship Him and honor Him through the Word of God. And we thank God that on this Palm Sunday we can still get the Word of God out. We uh, know that God is yet in control. Normally we would be celebrating Family Day, but the Lord know that we can still celebrate family day because we're still alive we're still doing the will of god so my brothers and sisters we welcome you to this broadcast today we pray that uh something will be said and done and through the word of god that your heart will be blessed and you will be encouraged you'll be inspired that we can continue to love the lord worship the lord in spirit and in truth. So my brothers and sisters, on this Palm Sunday, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we come now by no merits of our own, but we come in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For we realize, Heavenly Father, that without Him we can do nothing, but with Him all things are possible. Father, we bless your name this day. And blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of all of our sin. Father, we thank you for allowing us an opportunity to do this video. Lord, we know what's going on in our world, but Lord, we're so grateful and thankful that we serve an unchanging God. And Lord, we just know that you're going to bring things to where you would have them to be. Father, we pray for uh, those that have been infected by the coronavirus. We pray for their healing. We pray for those of us that have not been infected that you will protect us and keep us. And Father, we pray for this whole world. We pray that men and women, boys and girls, would turn from themselves the world saying stuff and things and turn to you wholeheartedly. For Lord, you said of my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from that wicked way that you would hear from heaven. You forgive us of our sin and you would heal our land. Lord, we need healing. We call on you right now, Lord, to grant healing, Lord, and bring this virus to an end. I know you are able and I ask you in the name of Jesus, bless it. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 At this time, my brothers and sisters, we're going to have a blessed song by this blessed New Hope Well Choir. In the name of Jesus, we come now. And realizing, yes, we're doing what the Lord would have us to do, but we are also following the orders of our government officials. We are practicing uh, social distancing. And let us do what we can in the name of the Lord to bring this to an end. But my brothers and sisters, we must know that the Lord has the power. And we must trust him and continue to ask him that he will stop this virus and grant evil. God bless you. And you hope well why. Sending up my timber. This is a blessed song that just blesses my heart. And I must confess that this is a request from their pastor. And I pray that it will bless you as it always blessed me. The other day, this song that's got in my heart and my spirit. And I asked my minister of music if he would do this song. And my brother and sister, we dedicate it to all of you this morning. Keep setting up your temper. God bless you.
weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest well upon me. God's word for God's people. At this time, I want to say welcome and good morning to all of you who are joining in with us on this broadcast. We pray that this uh, broadcast finds you and your family doing well. And we just want to encourage you to continue to look up to the hills from which cometh all of your help. For we know that all of our help comes from the Lord. And I want to say that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Again, I say you are welcome. And this is on behalf of our beloved pastor, Pastor Larry Arlacka Sr. and the entire New Hope Love Missionary Baptist Church family. May God bless you and may he continue to keep you. God be praised this morning. We know that we are in a period of uncertainty with everything that is going on, but we can be certain that we serve a God who will never change. And with everything that's going on, we can still be able to say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me, because he promised us that he never leave us, he never forsaken us, he is a God of provision, and he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So this song entitled, Thank You, Lord, for all you've done for me. If you could just look back over your life and see where God has brought you, we should all be able to say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. God bless you, and God continue to keep you as our prayer. Thank you. 
Blessed Father, we come now in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We come, Lord, knowing that you are here for us. No matter what it looks like, we know that you are here for us. We know that you love us because you gave your son for us. And now, Father, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us, dear Lord, from all unrighteousness. Lord, as I endeavor to teach and preach your word as you come and be with me, come and take over. Lord, come and have your way right now. Let your word have a free course. Come touching, healing, converting, and making whole. Lord, we pray that the lost will be saved. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the saved will be revived and renewed and restored. And Father, we just pray for the sick to be healed. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we thank God for this privilege and opportunity. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. We thank him for his unconditional love. We thank God for waking us this morning and starting us on another day's journey. My brothers and sisters, I thank God that the choir has reminded us that we are to keep singing up our temple every day. When you hear me singing, I'm singing up my temple, preaching, teaching, whatever it may be, we ought to be singing up our temple every day. And we ought to just thank God for all that he's done for us. My brothers and sisters, we normally would be celebrating Friends and Family Day here at the New Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church on this day, April the 5th, 2020. But you know, we can still celebrate because God is everywhere present at the same time. So just celebrate in your home today. And I want to give a shout out to all the families of the New Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church and all of their connections and just welcome you to this uh, video broadcast this morning and just know that God loves you. God loves you. We want to call your attention this morning to the book of Psalms. Psalms number 118 and verse 25. First of all, Psalms number 118, verse 25, and then 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9. Is anybody with me this morning? Amen. Amen. Listen, Psalms number 118, verse 25, says, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, and sin now prosperity. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, from the, also from the King James translation of the Bible, <clears throat> recorded by the Apostle Paul. And at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, Least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. My brothers and sisters, on this Palm Sunday, I want to talk about number one, save now. Save now. Subtopic, God's grace is sufficient. Save now. God's grace is sufficient. On this Palm Sunday, People need to know that God is in the saving business and that the Lord will save you right now. So the reason I use Psalm 118 and 25 
is because this is the song that we find the believers in Christ out there on uh, in from Bethany when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey. They was praising him and they were singing the song from Psalms 118 and 25 saying, save now, I pray, O Lord, Hosanna. Because in the Hebrew, it's Hosanna, which means save now. They were recognizing Jesus as their Savior. Even though, my brothers and sisters, they didn't understand it like we understand it now, they thought that he was going to be their earthly deliverer from the Roman oppression. But my brothers and sisters, today we know that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We know that he came to save the sinner. And can I get a praying church this morning? And so in John chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible teaches us that on Palm Sunday, they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet the Lord. They cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. My brothers and sisters, we got to realize that God's grace is sufficient to save us today. God's grace is sufficient to save us from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin, and from the presence of sin. I don't know about you, but I'm going home one day. Listen, my brothers and sisters, that was a song of celebration. We can also sing a song of celebration today because of these scriptures that we have, we definitely need the Lord to save us. We know that he is our savior. And my brothers and sisters, we need to realize today with all that is going on in our world that we still have a savior. We have a deliverer that will come to our rescue. I'm reminded, my brothers and sisters, as we begin to deal with this text this morning, of Jesus' disciples that was in a boat one day and on that river. But my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> the storm overwhelmed them. They was in the boat, but all of a sudden, they saw someone walking on the water. My brothers and sisters, they was in trouble. We're in trouble today, and we need to know that we have a Savior. Jesus was walking on water in order to come to his disciples. Do we have any disciples today? I want to tell you, there is no limit that the Lord will go to to save his people. When they looked up and saw him, some thought they'd seen a ghost. But Peter recognized that it was Jesus, and he said, Lord, let me come to you. He said, come on, Peter. Peter, listen, you can say what you want to about Peter, but Peter was the only one that got out of the boat and began to walk to Jesus. But we know the storm was broke because the storm was bad. And Peter began to take his eyes off of Jesus and look at the storm, and he began to sing. But thank God he remembered who Jesus was and said, Lord, save me. Jesus reached down and saved him. Somebody need a savior this morning. Out of all that you can think of, out of all that you can do, you need to make sure that Jesus is your savior. Yes. Hallelujah. God is good this morning. Yes. I want everybody to know that the Lord is good. My brothers and sisters, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Easter on uh, Palm Sunday with a borrowed donkey. My brothers and sisters, they begin to cry out, save us. And my brothers and sisters, 
Israel, a remnant of people, not everybody, but just a remnant, realized that Jesus was God. Hosanna, the one that could save the world. So my brothers and sisters, that brings us to our text today. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Watch what it says. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly will I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Look at verse 10. Therefore, this is what the Apostle Paul said. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Is anybody still with me? Somebody said Paul must be crazy. Yes, he was accused of being crazy. And sometimes when God is number one in your life, when the glory of God is up on you, people will call you crazy. They'll call you, say everything about you. But let me tell you something this morning. I am never strong in Christ until I realize my weaknesses. Until I realize, realize that I need God every moment, every second, and every split second of the day. I will never be strong in the Lord until I learn to sing the song every day. I'm leading and depending on the Lord. I couldn't wake myself this morning. I had to depend, depend on the Lord to wake me up this morning. Is anybody still with me? So my brothers and my sisters, if they cried out, save now, I tell you, I tell you, if the world, I'm talking about a saved folk, unsaved folk, folk that ain't never called on God, I'm talking about church folk, government, city leaders, county leaders, federal leaders, if they would just call on God and ask God to save us from this coronavirus, God would move in glory today. I'm convinced. So call unto me and I'll ask it. I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not of, but so many of us are too mean to call on God. We keep trusting in our medicine. We keep trusting in our These verses, these verses, in 2 Corinthians, here describe a moment in the Apostle Paul's life when he had an heavenly experience. Hallelujah. Now, I need to tell you that Scripture does not provide many details. In fact, Paul seemed reluctant, reluctant to even mention his own name. Instead, Paul says, I know a man. Paul was making sure he didn't brag on himself. He was talking about himself. He was not even sure whether his experience was physical are spiritual. He wasn't even he wasn't even sure of whether he was in his body or out of the body. But he does know that he was given a unique privilege to go to heaven and return to tell of it. Oh, what a privilege to be able to go to heaven and come back and tell about it. How do you know that he went to heaven, Lockett? It's in verse 2. He said, I was caught up into the third heaven. Now, we all know that the first heaven is where the clouds are. The second heaven is where the moon and the stars are. But the third heaven is where God himself sits on the throne. Paul said, I was caught up in the third heaven. He even said, I had words that are unspeakable. I can't share it with y'all. Come on, somebody. What if God we said? But hey, 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 hey. I just thought of something. 
that reminds me of the rapture. One day we all gonna be what? Caught up into the third heaven and see his face. No wonder the songwriter said, I just want to see him and look up on his face. Hey, my brothers and sisters, do you want to take the crown and lay it at the feet of Jesus and say, thank you, Lord. I came through trials. I came through ups and downs. I came through sickness and even death, but Lord, I thank you. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. What a God what a God we serve. Now I need to tell you, much debate has surrounded Paul's thorn in the flesh. But the point is not Pacific, is not the Pacific thorn, but that it existed at all. Think about it. This man Paul, the apostle, who wrote over half of the New Testament. This man, Paul, who gave his life to preaching and teaching the word. This man who was beaten and left for death. This man that was shipwrecked and snake bit, but yet God allowed him a born in the flesh. He allowed him some type of sickness that was vexing him and paining him. Come on, somebody. Paul calls it a messenger from Satan. But he also talks about having a thorn that he might not be lifted up in pride. But he might not get beside himself because of his revelation and his experience with God. How many of us, God can't really bless us because when God bless us right good, we get hot minded. We get the big head. We get lifted up in pride. Paul said maybe, just maybe, God allowed the storm to keep me where I need to be. Watch this now. The flesh, he says, a thorn in the flesh. And y'all know the story. Paul said, I prayed to my God three times. It's not as if Paul didn't know God. But he prayed to God to move the thorn in the flesh. So the flesh is still corrupt. Even though we've been saying we're still in these bodies that are corrupt and corrupting. Even an apostle who was given divine revelation and vision. But I need to tell you this morning, God is greater than Satan. He's greater than the flesh. He's greater than the coronavirus. He's greater than the flu. He's greater than cancer. Come on, somebody. He's greater than a mess. He's greater than congested heart failure. He's greater than every disease because God is a great physician that is able to heal all manner of sickness. Yes. That's why I tell you this morning, we need to call on the Lord. Ask the Lord to save us from this virus. Save us, my brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus. But I need to tell you this morning, as we look at this text and look at Apostle Paul, we find out that through human brokenness, that God's servants are made humble. Did y'all hear me? I said it's through human brokenness that God's servants are made humble. We need to realize that the power of Christ shines through our lives and our ministry when we are broken. Can I get a praying church here? My brothers and sisters, we need to realize that uh, when we have a contrite heart, God is able to use us. Most of the time, we call on God more when we are broken. But one thing about a broken vessel, oh Lord, the sun or the light can shine through that broken vessel. Can I get a witness? If you've never had any brokenness, you probably won't call on the Lord enough. 
Is anybody with me this morning? Well, yeah, and God's grace is sufficient for you and for me. Whatever this uh, thorn was that the Apostle Paul had, it, it greatly vexed and pained Paul. But God's provision was and is sufficient. God's all-sufficient grace is sufficient for everyone. Every now and then, we need to slip over to 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 uh, and read uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, and read uh, that God's grace is sufficient. Yeah. Because as I look at this this morning, I found out that the verb uh, here is in uh, the present tense. Uh, it says God's grace uh, is sufficient. God's grace uh, is sufficient for personal trial. Yes. And uh, it's even uh, ever and always able to meet human needs. Uh, is anybody still with me? Yes. And uh, we need to realize uh, that in the face of the thorn that remained, Paul did not uh, bemoan his state. Uh, Paul uh, didn't get mad at the Lord. Uh, Paul didn't keep questioning God why you won't take away my thorn. Oh yeah, why you won't take away this illness? Rather, he cultivated a new attitude. In God our reign, when he cultivated the new attitude, he realized that he had a new gratitude. And when you have a, a new well, yeah, attitude and gratitude. You can find out that you have altitude. If God, all right, God will raise you up. Paul recognized that what was weak in him served to magnify what was strong in God. I need to tell you this morning that God always allows those who are weak to be channeled of his great power. Can I get a witness here? Don't y'all remember when Jesus had taught his disciples and his apostles and his followers all day long? And the evening, oh yeah, had come. And they didn't have enough food. Can I get a witness? And Jesus asked him, why don't you feed this crowd? They began to tell him, we don't have enough money in the treasure to feed this crowd. Well, I'm thankful for a little bit. Hey, God, all right. They had just two fish and five low barley loaves of bread. That mean the cheapest bread that they could get. Oh, Lord. One thing about the little boy's lunch, he was willing to share it with the Lord. And two fish and five loaves of bread fed a multitude and they had food left over. God will use our nakedness, our weakness, our shortness, oh Lord, to show his power. Can I get a witness here? But as I make ready to leave you this morning, I submit that there are several very practical lessons to be learned from Paul's thorn experience. And it ought to let us know that God is yet in the saving business, that his grace is yet sufficient for us. Well, number one, yeah, I need you to know, as I leave you this morning, uh, that spiritual blessings uh, are more important than physical blessings. Oh, I know we spend all of our time uh, thinking about this whole body. We don't want to get this and that, and I don't blame you. Do the best that you can, but we got to learn that spiritual blessings uh, are more important than physical Paul thought he could be a better Christian, a better apostle, if he were relieved of his weakness. Can I get a praying church? But just the opposite was true 
because faith healers uh, who preach uh, that sickness is a sin have a hard time with this chapter because even though Paul thought about it, just get rid of this thorn in the flesh, this sickness, I can do greater work from the, for the Lord. But the Lord told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Can I get a witness? I, I often thought, Lord, how much better preaching I could do if I didn't have this allergy. Lord, it vexed me every time I stand up. God's grace is sufficient for me. God said, use what I give it to you. Amen. Amen. Get my glory. The second practical lesson uh, is about unanswered prayer. Unanswered prayer does not always mean the need is not met. Did y'all hear me this morning? Some of you like me can think of some of your prayer that seem like God didn't answer, but sometimes when God don't answer your prayer, that means his will is going to keep in. His will will be better for you than what you ask for. Sometimes we get a, a greater blessing when God does not answer our prayer. Can I get a witness here? God always answers the need, even though it seems he is not answering the prayer. Isn't God all right if I had time this morning? I, and I, if I had a congregation here, I tell you, oh Lord God is from Zion about Martha and Mary. That all Jesus told him, my brother, oh Lord is sick. Can I get a witness? But the Lord stayed there two more days and after he decided to leave. It was two more days and when he arrived back in Bethany, Lila had been in the grave for four long days. And Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. They were trying to tell him, Lord, if you had an answer, I pray everything would be all right. But I heard Jesus say, good God Almighty, you shall see the glory of God. Sometimes God doesn't answer our prayer because he wants us to see his glory. If you're a good God, I heard him when he said, just yes, show me where you laid him out. Went out to the graveyard, said move away the throne stone. When he moved the stone, called Lila by his name. Lila came stumbling out. They didn't realize that Jesus was the resurrection and life. Whoever believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. I got the clothes now, but the last practical lesson is weakness is strength. If Christ is in it, I pray your our weakness can be strength. If Christ is in it, I don't have time, but if you will, in your spare time, read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and 31. It gives us the proof. in God all right? And remember, if I just throw some names out to you, that it's not always how much you have, how smart you are, by all of your schooling, but it's about the will of God. And you're willing to let your vessel be used by the all-powerful God. Come here, Gideon. Gideon said, I didn't have but 300 soldiers. I started out with a great army, but God cut me down to 300 soldiers. Then when he cut me down, he gave me a picture for every man. And then I get a witness. Now I'm torched to go in the battle. Say, I want you to put the torch in the picture and don't do nothing till I tell you. And when I tell you, break your picture. Then God, all right. You know the story. Gideon won the battle of the midnight with 300 soldiers because he was obedient to God. And the reality is, is we never save ourselves. God is the Savior of the world. Isn't he? All right, lad, don't you remember David 
David slain, shot anybody? Remember, David slain, killed Goliath with a slain shot. And what about Moses' rod down at the Red Sea? Lord, what do I do now? Pharaoh's army is coming and they gave him only fair. Moses, what about using what you've been using? Straight your rod out of water, dry it up. Fourth practice of legend is there is grace to meet every need. Hallelujah. There is grace to meet every need. Grace will enable Paul to accept his weakness. That's the first thing we need God's grace to do is enable us to accept our weakness. Confess it to the Lord. Lord, I can't do this without you and God's strength. Will be shown to be strong. Can I get a witness? Goodbye now and hallelujah. If I don't get back no more, I want you to know I rooted, grounded, wrapped, in Jesus' love. God's grace is sufficient for me. God's grace is sufficient for you. It's all right. I heard Paul when he talked. To the Lord and told him, Lord, if you will take this sword away, but God told him, My grace is sufficient for you. For listen, Paul, let me tell you something. You are your weakness, show my strength. I'm made strong through your weakness. I heard Paul say, Not only do I have a thorn in the flesh, which is my infirmity, but I'm going to glorify. And praise in my infirmity. My call, let me say it my way because the Lord will make a way somehow when things are gone bad for you. Look like you can't see your way through. You need to look up toward heaven and call out to God and say, The Lord, save me. I realize that His grace is sufficient for you. In God, all right. Come here, Paul. Give me a witness. I heard Paul say, yeah, but, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the exorcist of the power may be of God and not of us. What are you saying, Paul? Get back out of the way. Let God have his way. What are you saying, Paul? We are hard-pressed on every side. Get not crushed. We are perplexed. But not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Always carried about in the body and dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. We know that He, my brother and sister, rode in the Jerusalem on another man donkey. Come on, somebody. He went up to carry in God all right. Carrying another man crawl, died another man death, lay in another man's tomb. Early Sunday morning, Jesus, my Savior, Jesus, my Redeemer, Jesus, my Sustainer, Jesus, my Perseverance, Jesus, my Doctor in the sick room, Jesus, my Savior. Jesus, my lawyer, my doctor, my protector, get up out of the grave. Oh, God. Oh, God. It haven't any nerve was in his hand. Go over to the church. We extend invitation. Somebody may see this broadcast, this YouTube upload. Realize this morning. That you have fear like you've never had it before. For the first time in your life, you don't know where to turn. You finally realize that it's, it's something bigger than you, and you can't fix it. Mom and dad can't fix it. The doctors can't fix it. Your lawyer said, Don't call me. I'm going to shut down. Your psychologist said, Don't come here. We're going to shut down. But I want to tell you somebody that's not shut down. It's Jesus. The living of the valley, the bright in the morning star, the resurrected Christ. 
the exalted Christ is inviting you to accept him as your own personal Savior this morning. For by grace are we saved through faith. It's not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. It's not of works that any should boast. But if you accept Jesus, you will be his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good work that we have before ordained that we shall walk in them. John 1 and 12, as many have received him, to them he gave power, the right to become the sons of God, the children of God, even unto them that believe on his name. Romans 10 and 9, that if thou confess that thou mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Listen, Romans 10 and 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We can trust him today. Father, I know I'm a sinner. I pray something like this, and I know I can't save myself. I've sinned and I've come short of your glory. I realize the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But Lord, your word said, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. Today, Lord, I believe that he died for me. I believe he paid off my sin that I believe he rose. I'm going to trust you, Lord, through faith. Save me, Jesus. Save me. If you pray that prayer, saved this morning. May God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Save now. God's grace is sufficient for you. Right now is sufficient. May God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Remember, you hope we're about the church at 479 Dogwood Flat Road. Post Office Box 337, Town Alabama, 35671. May God bless you. May the Lord forever keep you.